Hello everyone. Welcome back to Sun Innovate YouTube channel and uh, we are back with a new video on class D commutation of thyristor and uh, in a previous video class A B C we have discussed about the commutation method and uh, those people uh, not uh, seen the uh, the recent video of my commutation series so please uh, go to that video and uh, the uh, we have discussed the important topic in the that video so please do refer that video so you will be understand that what is a commutation so now back to the d commutation circuit so as you can the circuit diagram here and the waveform is also here so the dc supply is connected with the scr1 and the 2 and the capacitor diode and inductor and the load resistance is connected in a like this manner and uh, this is the waveform of the class d commutation so as you can see there is a, a little change because in a previous case class c commutation uh, we have used only the two switch and the capacitor and uh, that time we didn't use the diode and the inductor so in this commutation we have made some changes because uh, in a last case we have seen the very huge voltage across the capacitor will going to affect it to scr operation so that was the disadvantage of class c commutation and uh, i will going to give the link description in uh, this video uh, the rest of the videos are uh, already published in this channel class a b c please do refer that video also and uh, talking about this waveform of the class d commutation so you can see here the gate pulse is given to the ig1 so now i am given the gate pulse to this circuit so this current path will going to flow like this way the vdc voltage and uh, it goes to scr1 and through the resistance and here so you can see here the once your current is reached at this point and uh, now there are the two path one is goes to the scr2 and one is goes to the rl load so it won't be going to this direction because it was in a off condition so it has to compulsory pass uh, pass through this direction and once it is got reached to this path so again it has the two different path here this way and this way so if you consider this path so also your current is going to pass through this way because diode was in a forward bias so half of current will going to charge the inductor and capacitor by this way and also it goes to the resistance and again the commutation will require the force full component it means uh, the condition we need to satisfy the condition so here it is also the case of parallel lc component which is connected across the scr1 if you can look this circuit in deeply so once the gate pulse is given to the scr2 so that time what will happen the whatever the charge which is stored here it will be going to appear across this scr1 so it means the positive will be going to connected with the cathode and negative is going to connected with the anode so this scr is going to turn off and this will be going to turn on and this circuit is now no more the conduction because of this scr is on so it will make the short circuit of capacitor through this resistance and the load so by this way you can turn off the scr1 and the scr2 also because it is a vice versa process when you give the gate pulse to the scr1 so it will be going to turn off and when you give the gate pulse to the scr2 this things is going to turn off so you can refer this waveform and you can read the uh, the theory of class d commutation through the internet sources many good researchers have published so we are, we are thank to the that researchers also have uh, done the very good job in a research and uh, given the theory of the commutation so now we have moved to the matlab simulation of class d commutation so you can see this is a circuit diagram i have taken the all component from simulink library browser and uh, as per the circuit diagram theory which is i have shown here the all component is connected here and uh, gate pulse is given to this thyristor here and uh, this is the load resistance and this is the simulation results so let me run this simulation and i will show you the result so i'm running the simulation 
okay so now let me open the result so here you can see the the waveform again i have taken the last as the input voltage 300 voltage and uh, see i have made some changes here because what i have done the changes because this gate pulse is directly goes to this t1 thyristor i have renamed this thyristor name i have consider for t1 thyristor as this thyristor and t2 thyristor as this one in theory it was the reverse the one was this one and the second was this one but in this case i have rechanged okay there is a no point to change but uh, i have done something different because uh, i wanted to see that what will happen when i would uh, replace the t2 to, with the t1 so that's why i have done some experiment with the circuit to observe that what is happen when i exchange the position of t1 and t2 thyristor so that node gate value is given to the t2 thyristor so let me open this result again so you can see here the when t2 thyristor is turned on so please uh, do imagine that t2 thyristor as per the theory it was the t1 thyristor and the t1 thyristor as per the theory it was the t2 thyristor okay because i have done some experiment with this circuit don't worry about this but i wanted to check the circuit uh, results so that's why i have done the some experiment with this circuit so let's uh, move to the result here so when the gate pulse is given to the t2 thyristor so it goes turn on like this way this is the output voltage again as per the our uh, waveform so you can see here the red mark shows the output voltage and uh, once the gate pulse is given to the t1 thyristor so it goes discharge like this way because it is turn off and uh, the t2 thyristor remove the gate pulse and once again when i given the gate pulse to the t2 thyristor so it got turn on so this is all about the process of uh, class d commutation it means it is a complementary switch because uh, the when the gate pulse is given to the t1 thyristor so t2 is got turn on off and when gate pulse is given to the t1 t2 thyristor so t1 is going to turn off so it is a complement switching and uh, one more thing i will do with the experiment that is a uh, changing the duty cycle to verify my circuit whether it is working properly or not yes of course it is working properly so you can see here the gate pulse width is change here so you can see here the output voltage is also remain for this conduction period and uh, when the the pulse is given to the t1 thyristor at this point so that time your conduction period is turn off because that time your scr was turn off and uh, again if i am giving the gate pulse to the t2 thyristor it start conducting like this way so have you seen something different at this um, simulation circuit that uh, earlier starting with this video i have mentioned that point what is the difference between class c and class d commutation so i have mentioned that in a class c commutation please guys uh, those who have not seen the video of class c commutation please do refer that video watch this video to the end so you will be understand that because during this whole video in every video of my youtube channel i have mentioned and i have speak some important topics and some important factor many of subscriber and many of viewers are not watching my videos full length Okay, this is not the thing that I am talking for the my personal growth, but I am talking about the uh, it's uh, some moment or the some time I am fully explaining that things. Okay, but you have skipped that video, so you will be not going to understand that what I am speaking over here and what I am talking about the important factor. Okay, so this is the time you see. This is the time I am talking about the important factor that earlier of this video I talk about the class C commutation. So what was the disadvantage the high spike was observed okay if you don't remember please go to the class c commutation video and uh, listen my voice i have mentioned that the disadvantage is high spike due to the capacitor discharge and the source circuit okay so in this video you can see what is the dis uh, difference between class c and d so it is class d have made some change here one inductor is connected and one diode is connected so it is diode is a kind of free willing diode to remove the overcome problem of the spike voltage across the capacitor okay 
so you can see the result and you can also compare the result so you see here the spike is almost removed but if you see the waveform of the class C uh, commutation method please do guys go to the uh, place uh, for understanding purpose please close this video and go to the class C commutation method and watch that video results and uh, observe that the, the spike was very high you just go to that video and see the waveform the spike was very high huge high ok so that that problem is overcome here and the spikes was removed in this case you can see uh, you just observe my mouse cursor so it shows the spike was removed because of this diode and inductor is connected ok so this is the difference between the class C and class D commutation method ok so I hope you guys you will like this video please uh, share this video and comment uh, if you like this video thank you guys thank you very much